Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So welcome to your weekly Twin Flame Collective message. Yes, it's interesting because I, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to do a reading today for the, the Twin Flame Collective. Um, I didn't necessarily feel like it was I don't know, in alignment, um, I wasn't feeling, I was feeling indifferent towards it, I guess. I wasn't feeling and uh, really like I shouldn't, but I also wasn't really feel like I should at the same time. But just finished a personal reading and I'm set up for it. And now it's like, okay, no, this, this feels right. So just before we get into it, I do want to make a little bit of um, a clarification, clarifying statement here. My readings here for the Twin Flame Collective, these are mirror readings. And keep in mind, I am doing a 20% off sale on all mirror readings. And mirror readings don't just have to be for the Twin Flame situation. They can be anything that you want to compare the energies of. Um, but <clears throat> what I'm doing here for the Twin Flame Collective in the form of these mirror readings is getting an understanding or helping you get an understanding of what's going on around you from the perspective of the masculine energies and the feminine energies. We all have the, the divine masculine and the divine feminine within, whether you resonate more with the feminine side or the masculine side, it doesn't matter. We have all of these energies within us. And in order for you to really be or find union with your twin or with a divine partner, a divine mate, whatever, you need to have this balance of masculine and feminine within, okay? This is this twin flame situation or the twin flame journey is not about the other person. It never was, it never will be. This is all about the, the core of the twin flame journey is finding divine love and divine union within. Often we are catalyzed by someone else in the external world, someone external to us. And I put that in quotes because technically we are all one and we are all are connected. But in the 3D world, this often is catalyzed or kicked off by someone else. You feel this intense connection and love for someone else. But then that really is only meant to push you towards finding that love and that union and that wholeness within, yes? Because it is only from that place that you will actually really be able to truly be in some sort of divine partnership, whether that be with the person that you are under, have the understanding is your twin flame now, or it could be somebody else, okay? And these messages are not just for the twin flame collective. Anybody, anybody, and I have said this before, I will say it again today, Anybody can get can jump in on the twin flame journey and go through the motions, go through the experiences. This is not an exclusive club. Being a twin flame is not and does not make you any better than anyone else that may not resonate with the journey. Those of us who really are truly in on this journey right now, we are here to start first. We are going through this first, and then we have the opportunity to help others around us, to teach others this sense of, or teach people about this sense of divine and love and union within and thus without, um, or out externally, internally and then externally. Uh, there was one more point that I had, but I it slipped my mind. So that's fine. I'm going to stop rambling for now and I'm going to get to the, oh, what I wanted to say. Um, anybody can really get in on this twin flame situation. Okay. This is, this is more about bringing unconditional love back to humanity, back to the earth. Okay. So this does not make you any better than anyone else. Now, the reason why you may not, and you often will hear a lot of us that have been on this twin flame journey for some time, you'll hear us say, I wouldn't, something to the effect of, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemies. Cause this shit is rough y'all, <laughs> okay? This is not easy. Um, there is a lot of programming, a lot of conditioning, a lot of self-sabotaging behaviors that we all have to work through in order to, 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 to bring this union together. All right, so for the reading, I'm using two different decks, one to symbolize the masculine energy, one to symbolize the feminine energy, and we're gonna look at what's going on around us for the collective, and we're gonna look at it from the perspective of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, okay? Understand that you, yes, most likely resonate with one or the other, more. You resonate more with one than the other, but 
it is advised that you look at the situation, especially on the t on the side of whatever you don't resonate with the most. Like say, if you're a divine feminine watching this right now, um, I would recommend that you look at the perspective of the divine masculine energies and try and see and try and relate that to your inner self. Try to connect with your inner divine masculine energies through what's coming through here in this reading. Now, please keep in mind that this is in fact a general reading, okay? So please, this is not gonna resonate with everyone and everything is not going to resonate with any, everyone either. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, if you want a look into your specific situation, it is always advised to get a personal reading. You can absolutely get a personal reading in terms of what's going on with your own inner masculine and feminine energies. Take advantage of my mirror reading sale. It's going all through the month of February, okay? Okay. All right. Ooh, let's get to it, guys. <laughs> okay. So for those of you that are new, um, I just want to let you know I'm using these two decks here. This is the Tarot Apocalypsis. This deck is going to resemble or symbolize the energies of the Divine Masculine. And then we have the Tarot Illuminati, which is representing the energies of the Divine Feminine. I'm then going to pull a relationship spread from the Animal Spirit Guides. And then I'm going to close out the reading with an Oracle message from the uh, Lightworker Oracle deck. Okay? So here we go. Everybody settle in. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please show us an accurate representation of the energies of the Divine Masculine, represented by the deck on the left, and the energies of the Divine Feminine, represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how they are interacting with each other and also potentially mirroring each other as individuals and also as Divine Twin Flames. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, you guys, you, I don't know if you were hearing that, but um, you weren't crazy. My phone was ringing. <laughs> it was on vibrate and it was on my, my desk chair behind me. So if you heard that vibrating, you're not crazy. My phone was going off. <laughs> but it stopped and I threw it on my bed. So we're good. So okay, we are going to start by shuffling the energies of the Divine Masculine. So again, we're looking at what's going on for the Twin Flame Collective right now. And we're going to be looking at this from the perspective of the Divine Masculine energies and also from the perspective of the Divine Feminine energies, okay? So, from the perspective of the Divine Masculine. The divine Masculine. I really, honestly, I feel like the, the, the Masculine energies, the Divine Masculine energies are really starting to rise up. Really starting to rise up. Taking your power back, um, being more truthful, more authentic. Some of those in the Divine Masculine camp might be going a little bit reclusive, uh, might be entering into a bit of a hermit mode, may have been in a hermit mode for a little bit. And, but this is absolutely a good thing because you're really getting in, getting to the bottom of who you are. You're really starting to wrap your head around a lot of what's been going on for you if you've been dealing with a lot of synchronicities and just a lot of weird shit. Yeah, welcome to the spiritual realms. <laughs> like, spirit, spirit can get, the ether can get really weird. Not even gonna lie. It can get really weird because it, it, anything can happen. And that's, uh, I really feel like for those of you that resonate more with the divine masculine energies, you're really starting to come into terms of how infinite and how abundant um, the universe is and how like at literally anything can happen. Many of you may even be really um, doubling down on your research or um, knowledge of uh, the laws of attraction and... Uh, how you manifest through your mind and how you know your thoughts and beliefs create your reality, okay? And the principles of the fact that you can change it, you can change anything in your life, you can change your reality simply by changing your thoughts and beliefs and then following through with it. It's one thing to just change your thoughts and your beliefs about, about something but then stay with the same old um, programming or like the same, doing the same things that still 
reinforce the old belief system. It's another to change your belief systems and change your thoughts and then change your actions in accordance with that. And you're really, I really feel like a lot of you are very much coming to terms with that. All right, one more shuffle for the Divine Masculine Energies. All right, there we go. Boop. All right, Divine Masculine, you are set. From the perspective of the Divine Feminine, let's see what we've got here. I really feel like at this point, the Divine Feminine energies are kind of just like sitting back. I'm seeing, what I'm seeing is you're very much in the energies of the High Priestess, um, which to be honest is part of your archetype, okay? Uh, when it comes to spirituality because the high priestess represents the feminine or spiritual side of spirit whereas her counterpart is the hierophant who is um, grounded down to earth and religious okay the ma the, the and, and the masculine um, representation of spirituality but for the divine feminine energies I'm very much seeing you as the high priestess energy um, and I don't know. Did I say high priestess before or did I say empress? If I said empress, I meant to say high priestess. I just, I don't remember now. But anyway, um, secretive, just sitting back, observing, watching, knowing exactly what's going on around you, um, but still like just, just falling back. And maybe for some of you very much... Uh, enjoying the fruits of your labors of you know whatever you may have harvested recently uh, but also just observing not really trying to take action not really trying to reveal things at the moment you're very much biding your time but still knowing and seeing everything very much in a place of power and contentment and understanding you, where you fit in the cosmic energy field is what that feels like. Okay, one more shuffle for the Divine Feminine Energies, and then we're going to get started with the Divine Feminine. Here we go. Ooh. Boop. Okay. Overall energy for the Divine Feminine Collective, you have, yeah, you have the Knight of Pentacles here. Slow and steady wins the race. So, exactly, biding your time. The Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the deck. So I really do feel like Divine Feminine Energies, uh, you are, for those of you that resonate more with the Divine Feminine um, than the Divine Masculine, many of us have been in an energy of creating something new, going in a different direction. And even if you don't, even if you resonate more with the divine masculine energies, you still have the divine feminine energies within. So you're probably feeling this push towards something new also. You're just, you're just, um, you're just going about it in a different way. The divine feminine energies here are very much slow and steady wins the race, understands the value. For many of us, this is a brand new epiphany, a brand new realization, but you're understanding the value of taking it step by step, taking your time, not rushing anything, not trying to move too quickly. Because you don't, because especially with the Knight of Pentacles energy, this guy doesn't want to have to, doesn't leave any stone on unturned and doesn't want to have to end up at his destination only to find that something didn't go right or something wasn't completed correctly or well it doesn't wasn't done well enough and now they have to double back to go fix it ain't about that ain't even trying to hear that shit so do it right and do it right now to make to ensure success down the road okay that's really awesome because for many in the divine feminine camp on you know there was a lot of hasty action just trying to you're just trying to move forward and power through it, but the, yeah, that's not really happening any longer, and that's a really good thing. Wow, the tower. Oh boy. Okay, with all oh, the Ace of Cups and the Three of Pentacles. So this tower moment, to me, this tower moment feels like... Um, 
the feminine energies finally coming to a place where it's like, look, I'm not trying to rush anything. Slow and steady wins the race. For many of you, you finally started to understand what unconditional love and self-love really mean. Self-care also. And I really feel like divine feminine, those who resonate more with the divine feminine side of things are really trying to take it slow because they're enjoying their time with themselves. Or you're starting, this tower moment is symbolizing you starting to come into a, an understanding of, a deeper understanding of self-care, self-love, and just, and just taking your time and enjoying yourself and doing what it is you love, getting back to who you are. The Three of Pentacles is absolutely about uh, self-mastery, but this is also about teamwork. Um, some of you really could be working, oh, and alt entrepreneurship. Some of you may really be working on um, starting your own business, maybe working from home. Also, um, it is the feminine energies within all of us that are creating this tower moment because even if you're more on the masculine side of things, uh, you have the feminine energies within and it's that, it is that, that push from the feminine that's giving, that's creating some sort of tower moment here that is helping you rebuild and start to learn to show yourself love and starting to teach you to fill, on, fill up your own cup so that you will never be without. And really, you are the only one that can fill your cup and maintain it. It is not someone else's response. I mean, okay, let me say that differently. Someone could, someone else could absolutely fill your cup for you, but then you build a dependency on that. You become codependent on that person or that situation or that circumstance or that substance to fulfill you. Whereas if you fill it yourself, then you don't ever have to worry because you can always rely on yourself, can't you? Well, you should be able to at least. It's no one else's responsibility but your own to fulfill yourself. Never. Never has been, never will be. Not even your twin flame. Least of all your twin flame is what Spirit is saying. Because your twin flame has the responsibility of filling their own cup. Just like everyone else in the world. Okay? That in and of itself is absolutely a tower moment. And I also really feel like on behalf of the feminine side or the, the, from the feminine perspective, the tower also, this tower moment also um, represents the desire to slow down. Because this is not even about being forced to slow down. This is like, I just, I want to slow down. Like, hold on a second. Wait, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really good right now. Like, I'm goody good. I don't need to rush into anything. I don't want to rush into anything. Some of you may really be burnt out. <laughs> Quite burnt out. And just like, look, you know what? I'm good on my own. I'm just going to sit here and chill and enjoy myself while my cup overfloweth. And I'm just going to enjoy my overflowing cup. And I'm going to enjoy sharing it with others that want that reci re reciprocal whatever and you know just be friends and have fun and enjoy life and enjoy my space and my body and my time that's beautiful okay so getting into the first set of surrounding energies from the divine feminine perspective we have ooh the seven of swords um hmm Okay, well, I'm feeling an energy of someone thinks they're getting away with something. But they're not. Also, though, divine feminine energy, like I said, I'm, very, I'm seeing you very much as the high priestess right now who is very secretive. Like, she doesn't, like, she may reveal secrets, but she doesn't always. Oftentimes, she just sits there silent, just observing. And that's kind of what I feel like you're, how you are right now, Divine Feminine. Seven of Swords. Yes, Seven of Swords is about a deception and thinking and, or, or, or getting away with or thinking you're getting away with something. But it can also be deception in the fact that you're just not communicating. You're keeping your thoughts to yourself. You're keeping your actions, your beliefs, 
your opinions to yourself. Okay, that's absolutely what the Seven of Swords can represent here. And I feel like that's what it represents for the most part. But I did hear that someone thinks they're getting away with something. And it could be maybe someone around you, a friend, a family member, um, uh, maybe someone that you're dating right now. Um, maybe it could even be your Divine Masculine. They, and this is a pretty specific message. This is not for everybody. So if this resonates with you, and if you would know this resonates because you would be sitting there in that energy of, wow, you really think you can't get, you can, you can get over on this one. You really think, you, you really think you're lying to me like successfully right now. Like you really think I don't know what's going on right now. That would be if it resonated with you. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing in, this, in the, the high priestess also, okay? Which hasn't come out here. It's just, that's how I'm, that's how your energy feels to me right now. And it really could be anything. It doesn't even have to do with your twin flame. It doesn't even have to do with your divine masculine. It could be anything or anybody in your life. Okay? Seven of Swords is coupled with... <sighs> Fucking right, yeah. The King of Swords. See, but this is why... This is why you're biding your time. This is why you're not really saying anything. The King of Swords see, sees things very, very clearly. And the King of Swords is very much a judge to me. What I'm seeing here is this would be masculine energy coming forward within you, okay? Not really taking any action, but observing. And potentially seeing exactly what's going on and just not saying anything about it. Again, biding your time. Now, for some of you, this could be, a, and this is pretty specific, this could either be your divine masculine or your divine masculine energies within acting a fool and thinking they're getting away with something when they're not. But that's a very, that's a very, very specific, very small amount of you. And this actually has to, this would have to do with um, extreme logic like being too logical, overly logical. Whereas the high priestess would then sit back and be like, wow, well, you really forgot one major aspect or one major uh, proponent of this, didn't you? That would be emotion and intuition. Sorry, buddy, your logic isn't gonna do a damn thing there. Hmm, oh well. <laughs> but again, that is still a very, that's a very small, very select few of you, okay? Second set of surrounding energies from the feminine perspective, you have the Eight of Pentacles, hard at work, very much, very much hard at work, just doing the thing, honing your craft. Um, yeah, sticking to the routine also, because with these Eight Pentacles here, all these Pentacles are made in the same way, okay? So you probably have, that's really interesting. Take a chance on me just started playing in my head again. I don't know why. But maybe that's asking you, because maybe some of you have really gotten into a set routine. And you're being asked to step out of that. And take a chance on something. Do something new. Do something, do something crazy. I don't know. However that resonates with you. Eight of Pentacles is coupled with the Seven of Wands. Yeah, you have gotten, some of you really have gotten into a, a, a routine. Um, and I'm not going to lie, you know, it's gotten to you, gotten you to this very stable place, whether that be financially or like, um, emotionally, whatever that means for you. But it's almost as if you're getting into a rut now. And I think spirit with this, cause this ABBA song, Take a Chance on Me has been like, has been playing, has been popping into my head in reading since Friday. And it's now Sunday. Many in the Divine Feminine Collective, or at least how things look right now from the Divine Feminine perspective within the Collective, is that a lot of those who resonate more with the Divine Feminine energies have really gotten into a set routine. Have really snuggled into a nice little pocket. Which is beautiful, I'm not going to lie. But there is some aspect out here that is kind of asking you to, you know, to switch it up a little bit.
because there may be someone trying to come into your life trying to offer you some sort of love here with the ace of cups and the knight of pentacles because you see how the knight of pentacles is holding this pentacle here this could be someone trying to offer you some sort of commitment some sort of grounded offer of sorts but because of your routine that is absolutely understandable absolutely understandable because it has gotten to you to where you are right now it has really helped you understand these energies of self-love and all that and the balance between masculine and feminine and all that but because of this routine there or rigidness i guess you could say for some of you it's kind of blocking some sort of offer or some sort of change it's up to you but that also, that really could be the tower moment here. For some of you, there could be someone coming forward that wants to actually offer you something that might actually be really good for you. It could be your divine masculine. Absolutely could be. All right, take it as it resonates. But it also really could be someone new. And you might be in an overly logical energy with this King of Swords here and with the Seven of Swords being very deceptive towards someone that actually really likes you. I'm hearing commitment. Someone might honestly want to offer some sort of stable commitment. Doesn't have to be that, you know, you're getting, you're, you're getting married tomorrow, but, you know, everything's got to start somewhere, right? Baby steps. And this might be something that has been building over time. And you may not necessarily have been aware of it because you've been so focused on yourself. Okay, so the challenge from the Divine Feminine perspective, we have, yeah, the Ten of Swords. Well, gee, that actually really makes a lot of sense. And this absolutely could be what this Tower moment is. Really bringing, coming to the end of a situation and allowing yourself to release it, let it go, start anew. Not taking the pain and the hurt and the memories with you as you move forward, but taking the lessons that you learned with you and applying it to your life as you move forward. That's the challenge here. For some of you specifically, this challenge is opening your heart again and not approaching life from some sort of jaded point of view because of whatever struggle you may have experienced up and leading up until this point okay the ten of swords is coupled with the three of wands you've come a very long way as far as the divine feminine perspective and you've invested a lot into your reality and so now your challenge is to close out the cycle, complete these cycles of whatever you experienced in the past, whatever you've been working towards getting out of here with the Eight of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands. So in order for the, the return on your investment to come in. And that could be in the form of anything. That could be in the form of a job, a new home, a new status, a new relationship, whether that be with your twin flame or with someone new. But in order for these ships to come in, you have to clear the space, which is completing out, closing out the cycles here with the Ten of Swords, okay? Your potential outcome or the closing message from the Divine Feminine perspective, you have the Hermit, self-discovery. Shining your own light. This is often talks about walking uh, a, a, a solitary path. Understanding yourself on a deeper level, having more light of your own to shine forth for others to see and to lead the way for others. Some of you may actively be going into a bit of a hermit mode in order to close out these Ten of Swords. If you do, I don't feel like you're going to be there for very long. The Hermit is coupled with the Nine of Cups. Two nines here. Look at this. The Hermit is number nine. And then you have the Nine of Cups. But this is satisfaction 
that comes from understanding yourself on a deeper level about a, a satisfaction that comes from knowing who you truly are and appreciating who you truly are satisfaction for a lot of work done very very well it's quite beautiful okay so next we're going to get into the energies from the divine masculine perspective overall we're starting you off with the six of wands all right divine masculine so feeling victorious feeling good um some of this might be pride and ego for show a lot of that it's a lot of that actually um for those of you that are really in more of the divine masculine collective but others of you have achieved a really good a, a, a pretty deep personal victory you have yeah you sure have you have justice here this could be talking about some sort of legal situation maybe some of you um, are getting a divorce um, or at least you finally decided to get a divorce um, you're closing out some sort of contract whether that be physical or, or legal in the legal system or whether that be a soul contract of sorts we have our first instance of mirroring with the three of pentacles and finally we have the page of pentacles so from a, from the divine masculine perspective there absolutely is some sort of justice that's being brought into your life um, and this really could just be in the justice in coming coming through from some sort of uh, self-work self-mastery with the three of pentacles you have the three of pentacles in both the divine feminine and the divine masculine's overall energies now now keeping with the, the balance here okay looking at both energies within us the divine feminine energies within you may have led you to take some sort of action um, do something in a specific way i don't know but that created a tower moment here and you probably experienced it a little bit but it, like i said like i said for the divine feminine energies this was more of a tower moment for the people around you and thus you have victory with justice it doesn't mean that it had to be it was all that easy to deal with it might have been really rough it may not have been pretty at all but ultimately in hindsight justice has been served and this is a very strong victory for you divine masculine or from the divine masculine perspective okay that's great that really is <laughs> that's quite awesome and then with the page of pentacles here you're starting on a new level a new path in the physical world you do notice how this um the woman here on this card in this well in the princess of pentacles um which is which are pages but in this princess of pentacles she's pregnant birth rebirth is absolutely something that i'm picking up here especially with this bird that looks like it's flying upwards phoenix from the ashes risen maybe absolutely that did come out last week didn't it in the animal spirit deck and i think it didn't it come out for the divine masculine i don't remember now anyway getting into the first set of energies from the divine masculine perspective surrounding energies you have ooh, the three of swords okay all right well heartbreak yeah like I said, there could be a, a breakup of relationships. Some of you, some of you might be working towards divorce. I don't know. That that's not for everybody. This is a general reading. Take what resonates. But I do feel like you're facing this heartbreak head on, divine masculine, or from the divine masculine perspective. I think it's real. A lot of you are realizing the inauthenticity in a situation. Some of you might have been cheated on, which in some cases would be ironic, but I mean, yeah, spirit just said what goes around comes around. 
And I think for some of you, if that resonates with you, I feel like um, you are in a perspective of, wow, that really does not feel good. I don't like that at all. And I can't believe I ever put that as someone else through that. Well, all right. Three of Swords is coupled with the King of Cups. Oof. Emotional maturity here. Some of, someone got their heart broken. Oh, boy. Oh. Okay, so justice is speaking to some sort of karma here. And I feel like for some of you in the Divine Masculine Collective or the Divine Masculine Camp, you may have started a relationship with someone that was purely karmic and now your heart has been broken, but that has been part of the karmic lesson. You, have, in, in, uh, Spirit just said you reap what you sow. And this karmic partner may have broken your heart in a very similar way to how you may have broken your divine feminine's heart or other people's hearts in the past. That is your karmic retribution. That is your karmic lesson here. And the thing that I'm getting from this King of Cups was that this might have been a situation in which you were like, no, I'm really going to do this now. Like, I'm ready. I'm doing it. I'm doing it right. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make this happen. And then the Three of Swords energy hit. But ultimately, this is a necessary lesson. And also, if someone is leaving your life now, or if you're separating from someone, this obviously was not your forever mate, your divine partner, whatnot, whatever. Okay? Second set of surrounding energies from the divine masculine perspective, you have, oh, the empress. Well, my, look at that. And I really kind of feel like this Empress energy, who would be the Divine Feminine, is just kind of sitting there like, yeah, well, I'm right over here. Whenever you're ready, you just let me know. <laughs> fully expecting, fully expecting you or the Divine Masculine energy to like run off with someone else first or whatever, like really not even worried about it, just kind of like very much sitting in kind of like a high priestess energy too of just being like yeah all right whatever whenever he's ready it'll be fine i'm just kind of enjoying my abundance over here and then from the for the divine masculine you have this empress energy rising up within you integrating with your divine masculine energy or emperor energy the divine feminine may really be on your mind right now Especially if your heart was broken in the sense of, in a similar way to how you may have treated your Divine Feminine. And it doesn't even have to be, it, could, it doesn't even have to be a love relationship or a love situation that did this to you. This could be a friendship, this could be a colleague, this could be a co-worker, 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 excuse me. It also could just be some random person off the street or some random circumstance that just you know, just happened, but reminded you of or, or hurt you in a very similar way to how you may have hurt someone else in the past, particularly your divine feminine, okay? The empress is coupled with the nine of swords. This really feels like a, a, like a oh shit moment, like oh shit, is that what this feels like? Holy fuck. I can't believe she even still wants to talk to me. <laughs> In some cases, you don't know that. You don't know if, they, if she wants to talk to you any longer. And that's also what's giving you anxiety. For some of you, it's like you've been thinking about the Divine Feminine quite a bit and you want to reach out, you want to communicate, but you don't know how that would be received. But the biggest thing that I'm getting here from the Divine Masculine perspective is understanding the less uh, understanding a lot of the heartbreak that the divine feminine experienced before you did before you did and now she's sitting there pretty like all happy good in her space goody good and she's gucci fendi and she prada all by herself she don't need nothing from nobody 
ain't even trying to get nothing from nobody. She's just sitting pretty, enjoying existence. And here you are, still down in the 3D world, running through this hamster wheel, trying to get off the wheel. Thinking, afraid, fearful of the fact that things may have gone way too wrong. Not the case. Not the case at all. No matter what she may say in the physical world. And if she's saying anything to you in the physical world that makes you feel like she would never come around, number one, you need to come to terms with that because it's entirely possible. Anything is possible. But number two, you need to recognize that she actually just may not be ready to accept you back into her life. Because I honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not sure the Divine Feminine is really looking to accept anybody into her life in that way, especially if she's the one that walked away, that pulled away, that was like, fuck this, I'm done, and I'm focusing on myself with the Ace of Cups. <clears throat> and that has everything to do with the healing that she's needing to go through. Now, Divine Feminine. Keep in mind, Eight of Pentacles, Seven of Wands. Some of you have gotten into a really strong routine. Take a chance on me is what is being said here. So this absolutely could be your divine masculine saying, please let me in. Ooh, I want to cry as, long, as soon as I said that, I wanted to cry. Please let me in. I'm sorry. Please let me in. Do you feel that emotion? Because it's like, I'm trying very hard not to cry. <laughs> Whoa. There are some divine feminines out there that have closed and locked the door and are leaving the divine masculine out in the cold out of spite at the moment. For some of you, you still have every right to do it because the divine masculine, that, that, that individual representation of the divine masculine is not fully aligned and is still kind of a joker, kind of a a prankster, kind of like a, a knight of wands, not a king of wands. So you have every right to just keep him, no, no, send him right back where he came from. But there are, other, there are others out there that are kind of like, just, just being, acting purely out of spite now, which is unhealthy and is unfair. Because all relationships are a two-way street, period, okay? The challenge from the Divine Masculine perspective, we have death, yeah, transformation. And actually, it's, I'm going to call this a little bit of mini mirroring here because in the challenge for the Divine Feminine side, you have the Ten of Swords, which is very much a depiction of death, isn't it? Because it's got this person face down. Well, are they face down? Okay, well, this guy isn't face down. But in other decks, the person is face down with Ten Swords in their back. Um, I'd say that person's pretty dead. <laughs> okay? So I'm definitely going to call that some... It's not official mirroring, but it's definitely energetic mirroring. Transformation. Continuing your transformation from the divine masculine perspective. Death is coupled with the all-gifted. Yes! But you see, the all-gifted, this is a unique card in this deck. Uh, it talks about, it's a depiction of Pandora and her box, and it talks about uh, when in alignment or when upright, it is knowing your gifts, knowing your truths, and not being afraid to share them, not being afraid to express them to the world. When it is reversed or negatively aspected, this is being afraid of this, not knowing who you really are, not knowing what you want to do, being afraid and not allowing yourself to share your gifts with the world. Authenticity. Okay? So the challenge here is to transform out of whatever state you may have been that has been inauthentic and opening yourself up. Allowing your truth to be seen. Sharing your gifts and yourself, the true, honest depiction of yourself with the world. Okay? Your closing message or potential outcome here from the Divine Masculine perspective. You have the star. That's beautiful. Wish fulfillment and healing. You're going in the right direction. You absolutely are going in the right direction. This is coming from the Divine Masculine perspective. So this is for all of us here. But for the Divine Masculine specifically, 
you're going in the right direction. Everything that you've been through up until now has absolutely been a part of the journey. You haven't done anything intrinsically wrong. Personally, I don't believe that there is such a thing as right or wrong any longer. It is only experience and um, perception. Those are the real, that's really what it is. Nothing is right, nothing is wrong, it's just experience and learning from that experience, okay? Um, so everything that you've been through up until this point has absolutely been a part of the journey. You haven't really done anything wrong. You've been working through your wounds. You've been working on healing through your wounds and so there have been certain things that needed to happen in order for you to get to the bottom of something so that you can heal from it, okay? And ultimately, your wishes are going to be granted, but you have to stay true to yourself. You have to stay on, in your integrity. Wow. So we have a little bit more mirroring going on now because between the Hermit and the Nine of Cups, which is here in the Divine Feminine's closing message, and now the star for the Divine Masculine so far, talking about healing and authenticity, integrity. The Nine of Cups is the minor arcana version of the star, at least in my opinion, and the opinion of others too. So that's pretty beautiful. So the star is coupled with ha, the Ten of Cups. Oh boy. That's beautiful. Divine Masculine, you're really working towards your Ten of Cups. And from the Divine Masculine perspective in all of us, this is what we're working towards our wish fulfillment, our ultimate goal here, the Ten of Cups, ultimate emotional fulfillment. That's beautiful. Wow. So yeah, you really have been on the right path this whole time. It's not about the experience. It's not about what exactly happened on the journey. It's about what you learned from the experiences and how you apply that to your life moving forward. Again, like I said, with the Divine Feminine in her challenge being the Ten of Swords, leaving the past behind and only taking with you the lessons that you learn so that you can apply that to your future so that you don't recreate these old circumstances. Okay? Wow, that's amazing. All right, guys. So... Now, I'm going to get into the oracle guidance, and I'm going to pull the animal spirit relationship spread here in terms of this divine masculine and divine feminine union within all of us. All right, one more shuffle, and then... Cool, let's get started. So for the Divine Masculine energies, please spirit. For the Divine Masculine. Buffalo, okay. Divine Feminine. Shark, ooh, ho ho ho, all right. For the shadow dynamic of the relationship. Spider, excellent. And for the illuminated dynamic. Illuminated dynamic. Cheetah, all right. Okay. It doesn't matter. For the divine masculine energies, you have buffalo. Uh-oh, I passed it. Hold on, guys. Give me a second here, bear. There we go, buffalo. Grounded yet heavenly, practical yet spiritual. The hooves of the mighty buffalo are grounded in the earth, yet its heart and mind rise toward heaven. The buffalo sees challenge, hardship, or a bump in the road as an opportunity for upliftment. Therefore, the buffalo does not fear death, illness, or misfortune. 
Its gentle eyes look to the road ahead, trusting every turn. May we all experience this elusive yet life-changing bliss for time to, from time to time. And may we allow this card to remind us that life is a precious gift. When in balance, Buffalo is trusting and pure presence. When out of balance, Buffalo is restless and lacks gratitude. To bring into balance, one must practice pay, prayer or bhakti. Mm -hmm. For the divine feminine energies, we have shark. Whoa. But I promise you guys, it's not as bad as you think. Shark. <clears throat> Directness, exposure, revealing true nature and desire. The shark is only dangerous when we don't acknowledge it. This card indicates that something big needs to be exposed. It's lurking in the depths and creating tension. Shark energy takes over us when we are hesitant to be honest, to be totally ourselves, or to say what we really want. It may be tempting to continue pretending nothing is wrong, but when shark energy is at play, we feel its presence encircling us. This is very much a, uh, what I'm seeing for the divine feminine being in this high priestess mode. It's like she knows something's going on. But in most cases, she's not the one to speak on it though. I really feel like for a lot of us, it has more to do with the divine masculine. And so the divine masculine may feel the divine, the, the pressure of the divine feminine on him or her very much like a shark, a shark circling. Ooh, that's kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Excuse me. When in balance, it, shark is intriguing, captivating, and mysterious. When out of balance, shark is sneaky and destructive. To bring into balance, one needs to practice honesty. Boop. There it is right there. I mean, the Divine Feminine, you did get the Seven of Swords here. You do have the tower here. And I do feel like you're the one creating the tower moments. So, yeah, good on you. That's for the most part, really. Again, this is a general reading, so you know. Yeah, now. All right. The shadow dynamic of the relationship <clears throat> is spider. Creator of prosperity through life's work, dharma. The spider is an ingenious creator. Its greatest gift is weaving the thread of dharma into a vast intricate web that supports the spider and those around it, both financially and spiritually. It is hard work, but the spider neither tires nor becomes impatient. This card reminds us creativity is everywhere. Be process-oriented rather than results-oriented, and soon your, quote, work becomes like the weaving of a magical, priceless tapestry. Abundance follows. When in balance, spider is appreciative, enthusiastic, and prosperous. When out of balance, spider gets discouraged, tired, or f and, <clears throat> excuse me, and forlorn. To bring uh, into balance, one needs to experience some Playful creativity. Very nice. Finally, the illuminated dynamic is cheetah. Cheetah. Solar force, action, achievement, masculine energy. The cheetah is the epitome of the solar forces at work. The sun doesn't shine onto the cheetah, it shines from inside this great creature and expands outward to brighten the universe. The energy within a cheetah personality is palpable to others, and they naturally attract an audience to bear witness to their remarkable achievements. Purpose and passion are the best fuel for a cheetah's forward momentum. So if you're lacking in those areas, reconnect to the why before you start running. When in balance, Chiva achieves I'm sorry, cheetah <laughs> achieves anything and is, has boundless energy. When out of balance, cheetah is impatient and competitive. To bring into balance, one must reconnect to purpose. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I am now going to close the reading with one card from the Lightworker Oracle deck. <clears throat>
Okay, here we go. Best message, please, Spirit, for the Twin Flame Collective at this time. Best message, please. There it is. Yeah. Card number five, Karmic Clearing. Ooh. Turned right to it. Okay. You are fast outgrowing a level of consciousness to which are attached particular wounds, I, I issues, excuse me, issues and struggles. As you outgrow that consciousness, these issues will release their grip on you. You are receiving divine notice that karmic clearing is taking place through a combination of your own efforts and spiritual grace from the heart of the divine. It is time for an old wound to be released once and for all. I'm going to read a little bit of this. Karma is not punishment. Karma is essentially our soul's lesson plan for this lifetime, carried over from past lifetimes. It is, the only, it is the way we grow and develop as a soul, sometimes through challenges and sometimes through blessings. Our positive karma is seen in the skills and talents we have mastered over many lifetimes. Also, when opportunities flow easily and healing happens swiftly, there is a sense of positive karma, an easy grace that effortlessly takes place in your life. This is what happens when we are clear enough of our own past pain to have little resistance between us and the natural flow of life. More challenging karma is revealed in the lessons we are still learning. These usually appear in the guise of painful circumstances or reactions that repeat themselves in our lives. The stronger the soul, the more challenging the lesson it is willing to master this lifetime. As with any education, the higher the level of training, the more demanding the work. When you are working through big challenges, it is often a sign that you are on an advanced spiritual path. Must you always have struggle in your life as an advanced soul? Of course not. As you master your lessons, you will find you develop an ability to live your life more peacefully. However, it would be incorrect to interpret a struggle as a sign that you are not progressing spiritually. Sometimes the more painful struggle, the more painful a struggle has been, the more difficult it can be to release that pain and associated memories or scars. The spiritual worlds know you are in need of divine intervention to help clear a pattern that was once painfully lodged in your body, mind, and soul. Enough of the struggle. Divine love now offers healing and freedom. We clear karma by learning to trust and relax, by choosing not to punish ourselves with shame, guilt, fear, or unworthiness, by continuing to balance our efforts with a surrender into divine grace. We take responsibility for our own healing, doing all that we can, and trusting that the universe will lovingly and effectively handle everything else so that we can progress and succeed. If you have been struggling with a long-term issue, this oracle card comes as a particular sign that the universe wants to step in and assist you. Right. Invite this healing blessing of karmic clearing through love into your life now. Okay, guys, so there you have it. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. Please keep in mind that I am doing a twin, well, I'm doing a mirror reading special for the month of February. So it doesn't have to be a twin flame reading. It could be, it could absolutely be a reading um, in between, you know, where you are in, the, in your twin flame journey versus where your twin is. It could be a reading into the balance between masculine and feminine energies within you, but it also could be anything. Just make sure that you have something to compare um, because like I, like I did right here, I'm gonna be using two decks and I'm gonna be um, looking at one side of the, of the situation versus the other side of the situation and how they may be mirroring each other, how they're interacting interacting with each other, how the energies are lining up. Yes. 20% off for the whole month of February. Anyway, there's that. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you have a great Sunday and I will see you in the morning for morning coffee. Yeah. Take care. Bye.